Next, we will discuss the formula for computing the conditional probability and its applications. Previously, we set the goal to be able to find the probabilities of compound events when the probabilities of the original event or events are given. For finding the probability of the complementary event, we develop the complementary rule. For finding the probability of the union of two events, we develop the special and general addition rules. The next goal is to develop the rule for finding the probability of the intersection of two events. First, let's formalize the approach for finding the conditional probability. For any two events A and B, the way we found the probability of A given B was to divide the number of outcomes in B that describe A by the number of outcomes in B. This process can be easily converted into the following formula, which we call the conditional probability formula. Contingency tables is the best playground for practicing the conditional probability formula. Let's recall the following contingency table with events Y3 and R2 defined as shown. Let's find the conditional probability of Y3 given R2 using the conditional probability formula, where the numerator is the joint probability of Y3 and R2, and the denominator is the marginal probability of R2 which we compute to get 0 0.11. Let's find another conditional probability, for example, of R1 given Y4, using the conditional probability formula, where the numerator is the joint probability of R1 and Y4, and the denominator is the marginal probability of Y4, which we compute to get 0 0.73. Consider the conditional probability formula again. Let's multiply both sides by the probability of B and swap the sides of the equation. This result is known as the general multiplication rule that allows to find the probability of the intersection of any two events. When A and B are independent, in other words, when the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A, in the general multiplication rule, we can replace the probability of A given B with the probability of A to get the following result, which is known as the special multiplication rule. What makes it special is the fact that it can only be applied for two independent events. For example, if A and B are independent and the probability of A is 0 0.4 and the probability of B is 0 0.5, the probability of A and B is the product of the probability of A and the probability of B and equal to 0 0.2. In this particular example, we can also use the general addition rule and find the probability of the union of two independent events A and B. In this case, it is equal to 0 0.7. Using the special multiplication rule, we can verify whether two events are independent or not. For example, in the following contingency table, consider events Y2 and R3 and let's check whether they are independent or not. If they were independent, then the special multiplication rule will be true. That is, the probability of Y2 and R3 will be equal to the product of the probability of Y2 by the probability of R3. The left-hand side is the joint probability of Y2 and R3, which is 0 0.15. And the right-hand side is the product of the marginal probabilities of Y2 and R3. It is easy to verify that the two sides are not equal to one another, therefore the events are dependent. We finally developed a complete set of probability rules that we can use to find the probabilities of the complement of an event and the union and intersection of any two events.